Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. For the past many weeks, we've been getting you the big story, India's EV mission, the mission to electrify practically all vehicles by 2032. One company that had entered the EV space much before anybody else was M&M with their acquisition of Freyba in 2010. But it's been seven years, volumes have been lukewarm, but the company is hoping and keeping its fingers crossed that perhaps this time around, the EV business will see a turnaround. And to talk about the plans going forward, joining me now is Pavan Goenka, the Managing Director of m and &M. Well, many thanks, Pavan Goenka, for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Always a pleasure to speak with you, sir. For quite some time now, since 2010, when you made your acquisition of Reva, you've been praying that the government focuses more on electric vehicles, creates the enabling ecosystem. It seems your seven-year-long prayers have been answered because the government is looking at EVs now in a very, very significant way. So in that sense, sir, would you, would you agree that uh, perhaps electric vehicles is now at a turning point here in India? No, no, always uh, nice to talk about electric vehicle. This is a subject that uh, I can talk about forever. Um, you're right. Uh, we have waited for a long time. Uh, we have had uh, support from Government of India in the past also. But what's happening in the last, uh, I would say, three to six months, uh, is uh, a very strong <coughs> focus and thrust coming from government of India. Uh, and that makes me believe that, uh, believe that now we are just about ready for a takeoff on electric vehicles, something that uh, we have been hoping for for quite some time. So, yes, I am very excited about uh, the developments that have happened in the last uh, three to six months. Mm. So, talk to me now about specifically about your EV plans going forward because, you know, some of your investors may be a little concerned, say, thinking that, you know, here m and is once again uh, investing an additional 150 crores, talking about setting up a, perhaps a three-wheeler plant uh, in a business that is not giving returns. How would you allay their concerns, sir? Let's put it this way, that as far as any auto OEM anywhere in the world is concerned today, nobody can ignore electric vehicles. Uh, because uh, whether it is India, China, USA, Western Europe, uh, Korea, any country, everybody today is all governments are supporting electric vehicles. And in fact, there are a lot of non-automotive players who are coming into the fray uh, with a view of electric vehicles. And therefore, for anyone to think that Mahindra should not invest in electric vehicle will be a very short-term view. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, it is also true and clear that electric vehicle is not where anybody is going to make uh, money very quickly. It's going to take a lot of investment, a uh, lot of waiting, uh, which we have been saying all along, before we can make money in electric vehicles. Uh, and <clears throat> in many ways, the investment that we have put in into electric vehicles in the last six, seven years is very small compared to uh, what you see uh, in terms of global uh, companies' investment in electric vehicle, and that is partly because of the frugal engineering, the frugal approach that Indian companies and Mahindra has. Uh, so I would not uh, consider 600 crore or so that we have invested so far uh, as a large investment uh, that the investors need to be concerned about, and uh, it's something that uh, the returns will come, and it will, when they start pouring in, it will be uh, coming in, in buckets mm -hmm. is what I'm expecting. But I'm still saying that we are still few years away, uh, in spite of the interest that is being shown now by uh, by all stakeholders in electric vehicles. It, we are still few years away before there is financial return. What will happen first is the market return, the volume return, where we start seeing some numbers clocking uh, on the board, uh, and only after that we'll start seeing financial return. So that's your message, then, largely to investors also, you know, to you know, to say that electric vehicles is a whole new game altogether. So therefore, one needs to be patient when it comes to assessing the financial returns on the investments that you've been making in the last seven years. Absolutely. And again, like I said, that 600 crore that we've invested is, uh, is a very small sum uh, compared to the overall investment that we make in our business uh, in the last five, six years, and very small compared to investments that are being made by uh, many global OEMs. All right. Tell me then, sir, what will you do differently now? We are calling it Mahindra. EV 2.0, in a sense, you're trying to do something, you're trying to sort of restart the engine once again. What do we expect Mahindra to do differently well, now going forward vis-a-vis -vis what you've done in the past? So there are three tracks uh, on which the EV uses will happen, we believe, in future. In the passenger segment, uh, there is a commercial segment also. Uh, on the passenger segment, I believe that the biggest, uh, fastest ramp-up 
and that will happen will be on the use of electric vehicles by fleet operators and aggregators mm -hmm. where they'll put the vehicle on use on road to run 150 kilometers 200 kilometers per day and that will give a very good return because more you drive more you save uh, since per kilometer cost is much lower mm -hmm. uh, and therefore i would expect a very steep ramp up uh, to happen there and mahindra already has uh, two products uh, in that segment and we'll be doing more over the next uh, 12 to 18 months uh, and that will be sort of our uh, part one, uh, which is still remaining at the low voltage, 72 volt technology mm -hmm. uh, and, and serving the need of uh, a fleet taxi segment. Mm -hmm. The second will be the same kind of vehicles being used for personal segment. And I believe that once more and more vehicles come on the road, uh, you will see more personal buyers becoming interested in electric vehicles because the virtues of electric vehicles are many. Uh, where we have concern is in range, where we have concern is in new technology and therefore a little bit of wait and watch. What right. we have to do in this segment, uh, Ranajay, to make it happen mm -hmm. is we have to bring down the cost uh, mm -hmm. from what it is today to maybe about 20% uh, down. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot expect the government of India to increase their subsidies of mm -hmm. electric vehicles. Uh, I think what we have through the Farm scheme, what we have through the new GST rate that has been announced, uh, is what we need to count on and not mm -hmm. expect something more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so that is happening. That's our one focus of how do we bring down the cost of current technology? Mm -hmm. How do we increase the range from the 110 to 140 kilometers that we have to maybe 170, 180, 200 kilometers mm -hmm. uh, and make it a mass uh, affordable mass transport product? Okay. And this is where the large volumes will come from in India, I believe, for at least for the short to medium term. On the other hand, what we're calling EV 2.0 is the technology for the high end, where mm -hmm. we will be bringing in uh, batteries uh, with 360 volts uh, 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 power with, uh, with 50 kilowatts of power rather than the 11, 12 kilowatts that we have today, uh, to uh, kilowatt hour, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. uh, what we have today, mm -hmm. and uh, get a range of uh, 300, 350 kilometers performance of uh, four to five seconds, zero to 100. Mm -hmm. So more performance car, more for personal use, more for high end uh, costing, perhaps 25 lakh, 30 lakh uh, price point mm -hmm. uh, is the EV 2.0, where we will have the latest technology, mm -hmm. uh, uh, sort of cutting edge technology, uh, latest performance and high range. Mm -hmm. uh, but that I do not expect in India uh, to become the high volume game, mm -hmm. uh, because for that to become affordable, the subsidies required are very high per vehicle. Uh, and I do not think the government of India would and should uh, put in so much money into the high end. Mm -hmm. The money that they need to put in, in my opinion, is like what they have done today, right. which is mm -hmm. putting in uh, at the level which will support the the, the entry level, the, the uh, mass market uh, mm -hmm. affordable vehicles. Let's talk about a few of these things. That in addition, yeah. Okay, fine. Go ahead, sir. And in in, yeah. in addition to that, sorry. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, one more thing. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. right now we don't have enough capacity to ramp up mm -hmm. because clearly it's a chicken and egg situation. We cannot put in a lot of capacity without volume. Mm -hmm. uh, we can make maybe 400 vehicles per month right now. Even that is not tested because the maximum that we have done so far is 150 vehicles a month. Mm -hmm. uh, we have already started work on mm -hmm. increasing capacity to about 1,000 vehicles a month, which will mm -hmm. happen in the next, next three, four months. Mm -hmm. And then we have taken a leap of faith to invest for capacity as high as 5,000 vehicles a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and that work has just about started on investment for 5,000. And we are hoping that this time the thrust that's coming on electric vehicle is for real. Mm -hmm. And we are going to see uh, increase in volume uh, overall in India. And that Mahindra will play a, a key role in it. Undoubtedly, uh, today we are the only players, but undoubtedly when the volumes start coming in, uh, mm -hmm. more and more players will come into this uh, electric vehicles. We certainly expect that. In fact, we, we welcome that because right now we are the only one who is trying to sort of clear the road for electric vehicles. We would like to see more and more players to come in mm -hmm. and clear the uh, the path for electric vehicles. Right, because you know one key area and segment that you're also talking about. In fact, that's the first one you mentioned was in was in the uh, uh, in in the shared mobility space with many of these app-based taxi uh, uh, companies could look at the electric option because it brings down the overall overall cost of uh, actually running these vehicles. Any sort of volume guidance on that uh, you can give me, sir, over the next two to three years? Let's see, uh, 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 I've been giving volume guidance to electric vehicle for the last six, seven years, and I've been wrong every year. <laughs> so I hesitate to give, uh, give guidance. But let me, let me uh, say this, mm. that for taxi aggregators, electric vehicle will finally come down to 
what is per kilometer cost of running it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, since they will be running the vehicles for 150 to 180 kilometers per day, mm -hmm. it becomes more affordable for taxi aggregators than for a private user because private user will run only 50 kilometers a day, mm -hmm. 60 kilometers a day on an average. Mm -hmm. right? And therefore, since you save maybe three rupees per kilometer, four rupees per kilometer in running cost, and the payback will be much faster for electric vehicles. We have been doing some calculations with some of the aggregators, and I think where we are right now, it's just about break even for them just about break even not a comfortable break even but just mm -hmm. about break even mm -hmm. we need to bring down the price mm -hmm. uh, we i talked about cost mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. but we also have to make some money in the process so we have to bring down the price by five to ten percent from where we are today mm -hmm. uh, to be able to make it comfortable for aggregators my view is that if you're able to do that if you're able to increase the range to about 170 180 uh, thereby eliminating the need for a fast charge during the day, mm -hmm. uh, the volume ramp up can happen very quickly. Uh, and once it starts happening, it will sort of feed on itself. It will obviously depend on how the vehicles perform on the road. Uh, we have to convince them and prove and right. show that there are no breakdowns that happen, just like it is the case with petrol and uh, diesel vehicles. So a lot of the onus is frankly on us, right. Right. on the OEMs, mm -hmm. uh, from the viewpoint of reducing the price, from uh -huh. the viewpoint of encouraging suppliers to set up a uh, shop in India, uh -huh. uh, from the viewpoint of uh, offering support, uh, taking care of the vehicles, ensuring vehicles run properly, mm -hmm. no breakdowns right. uh, for the taxi aggregators, mm -hmm. working with them to make it happen. So, right. uh, so I would think that uh, we, we, we will have to play our role. All right. So, you know, I have two more specific questions on this point about, uh, about your association and the kind of potential you see with these app-based uh, uh, taxi companies. So you already have an association with Ola. Does it have any sort of non-compete uh, uh, clause whereby which you cannot take the same services that you're offering to Ola to, let's say, to an Uber? So are you open to perhaps a similar arrangement with Uber going forward? I think in this space uh, of uh, OEM and aggregator uh, alliances, uh, and there are many for many different uh, segments. Uh, what we have today is a normal alliance for, for vehicles. Uh, there are no exclusivity clauses. Neither side can afford exclusivity, nor can a Ola, Uber, or Zoom car give us exclusivity for using our vehicles, mm -hmm. nor can we give an exclusivity for selling only to them, uh, mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a vastly uh, sort of def uh, expanding mm -hmm. field, mm -hmm. and we don't know what the tomorrow will be. Uh, and, and therefore, all of the alliances that are defined with anyone mm -hmm. uh, is a package that is developed for that alliance. Mm -hmm. We may have a different package with somebody else suiting to, to, to that company, but none of these has exclusivity. Are you talking to Uber Either then, way. sir? Are you talking to Uber then? I cannot tell you who all we are talking mm -hmm. to. Uh, we, are, we are talking to several uh, aggregators and fleet operators right now. Mm -hmm. uh, on electric vehicles especially, uh, we're talking to several. I cannot name any specific ones. Could we expect m and then to enter, enter this space? Can you convince your board that why depend, I mean, while you may have your alliances with an Ola and perhaps possibly with an Uber in the future, can we expect m and uh, you know, to begin with playing a larger role uh, in this space with your own, perhaps your own company going forward? So. Uh, so as you know that we have a company called Mahindra Logistics, uh, which is a transport company both for goods and people. Mm -hmm. uh, they do a lot of people transport for, uh, for companies, uh, the employee transport that happens, uh, and they deploy uh, several thousand vehicles in that. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we can potentially be looking at that application. That is not a radio taxi application. That is an application of a fleet. Mm -hmm. uh, where the fleet could slowly get converted to or we add electric vehicles to that fleet. Uh, that is, that is, that is uh, doable. In fact, we are looking at it, thinking about it, whether it's, it's, uh, it's uh, economically viable for them to do it. Uh, I don't think that Mahindra will venture into a radio cab application because that's a very different ball game. Mm -hmm. uh, they will require a different kind of scale uh, to, to, to make it happen. So right now, I would say that the radio taxi is not in our scope. Mm -hmm. But fleet operations are very much in our scope. Well, hold on to that thought, sir. We'll be back with Pavan Goenka, but after this short commercial break, don't go anywhere.